As humans are far too dynamic to be fit into a box. Now, labeling can be useful when we need to determine or distinguish something, but once you place a label on a person, you're limiting who that person is. Labels warp our perceptions of people. By labeling somebody based on their race, their gender, their age, their looks, and their socioeconomic status, We've already formed opinions of what this person can and cannot do. When you meet me in passing, you'll notice that I have vibrant colored hair. Depending on where I'm going, I might be dressed up or I'll be in gym attire. Most likely, I'll have a smile on my face. If you stop to talk to me, you'll find out that I'm very enthusiastic, I'm very high energy, and I'm pretty outgoing. If you continue to ask questions, getting to know me, you'll find out that I'm fueled with passion. I'm fueled with passion for boxing, competing in boxing, coaching at the University of Buffalo's boxing team, that I am a personal trainer at Fitness 19, that I'm an exercise science major, a religious studies major, and I have a minor in dietetics, and that I like to stay busy most of my days. Now, one of those things, or a couple of those things, I should say, kind of don't fit in the mix when somebody looks at me. So you might ask, why boxing? And I'll go on to tell you a little bit about my boxing. You'll find out that I have 29 fights and that I don't just box for recreational purposes, that I'm ranked number five in the country at 119 pounds with the hopes of going to the 2020 Olympics. You'll know, thank you. <laughs> You'll find out that I'm a two-time national champion, a one-time bronze medalist, a one-time national silver medalist, that I have three state titles, that I was the second female locally to be voted Amateur Boxer of the Year, and that nationwide I was voted as the female amateur most inspirational. Thank you. <laughs> now, still, this doesn't really fit my persona, because as you can tell, I come off as being a kind of dainty female. I'm not very big. I am small, and I get a lot of mixed reactions when people find out that I box. Some people comment and they question why I would want to mess up this pretty face. Some people ask how I could be a successful boxer, given that I'm so small. And some people, just question, well, why? Why do you box? Why would you want to put yourself in a position where you have to defend yourself and impose your will? After all, boxing is a male-dominated sport. All of my coaches have been males, and it's not very often that you see a female boxing coach. Um, when I go to introduce myself at UB, and I stick out my hand for someone to shake my hand, and I say, hi, I'm the boxing coach, Sometimes people smirk and some people laugh because they don't take me very serious. So why? Why would I want to go in a boxing ring voluntarily, taking a chance at getting hurt, having to defend myself, and having to impose my will? I've been there before. And this following slide, just a bunch of different things that I do. So the one is me in a ball gown, the other one's of me dancing, and then there's some pictures of me fighting. The reason why I got into boxing 
is very easy for me to know. But it's not something that you're going to get just by looking at me and passing in the street. My junior year of high school, I was in a very scary, uncomfortable, and confusing situation that I felt I could not get out of. I did not feel that it was okay to be sexually harassed and assaulted by an adult who was supposed to be a trustworthy teacher. This left me feeling very fearful and confused and frightened every time that I walked into school. I was 16 years old, and I was supposed to be safe in that school, and I wasn't. I ended up telling my best friend, who eventually got a third party to intervene, and word got out that a teacher was fired for sexual misconduct. Now, walking into my senior year was nothing short of a nightmare. This school that I once loved, I was so afraid to walk into because I was afraid of being judged. And I was afraid that walking in there, I'd have these horrible memories of the things that would happen to me, that had happened to me. But because I loved school, I sucked it up and I walked in there. Now, my first three years of, uh, of high school, I was very involved, I was on track cross-country, National Honor Society, I did musicals, lots of community service, and I was on student council, very involved. I always wanted to make the school a better place. Senior year was very different for me. You saw someone who used to see the positivity in every single person completely lose herself. My demeanor changed. My personality changed. My confidence was at an all-time low. I was sexually assaulted, and now I'm getting harassed and bullied and tormented by my peers, calling me promiscuous and calling me loose. The bullying got to be so bad that I quit my track team. It was too much for me to bear in the spring. I thought I had let these kids win. I found them to be pretty ignorant because if they knew what happened, they would have never said something like that. They would have never commented on the situation that I had went through. I had enough going on in my life battling this horrible situation. And last year, being diagnosed with PTSD five years later, it's no wonder I had to walk out of classrooms bawling my eyes out because I had horrible flashbacks. I thought I let these kids win, but in the end, I didn't. In my gym class, there was a boxing lesson, and it's the first time I ever really got exposed to boxing. I grew up in Alden. It's kind of a country, rural setting, so fighting was never a thing that crossed my mind. That boxing gym class lit a passion and lit a fire that made me realize, you know what? I think I can get into this. So I joined a local boxing club, and then fast forwarding into the first semester of college, I ended up joining UB Boxing because it seemed like a better fit for me. I didn't know exactly why, but part of me wanted to fight. You could box just to hit the bags, and you can box to compete. Something in me wanted to fight. Maybe it was because I missed the opportunity um, to compete in track my, my senior year. Maybe it was just because I was super angry and I wanted to let out my aggression. But regardless, I joined the boxing club and I told my coach, I really, really want to fight. But apparently, he didn't see me as a person that was going to be capable of fighting. That I didn't have that persona of you know, confidence. I didn't, I didn't give off that vibe that I would be a good fighter. But I was very determined to fight. And the cool thing about me being as stubborn as I am is I was very determined to fight. And I was determined to prove him wrong. I would go to practice twice a day, first person to get to the gym, last person to leave. And eventually, I did have a fight. And I had multiple fights. And it was different than anything I've ever experienced. I ran. I've competed, 
but these fights were different. See, I compare fighting a lot to real life. More importantly, I compare fighting to the idea that we should not judge people off of what we initially perceive. Now, I know you're probably wondering why. Well, when I would go into the ring and I would see my opponents, I would judge them based on their looks or maybe based on tape that I watched of them. But very often, I was wrong. I would see girls that looked dainty, just like myself, and I'd be like, there's no way this girl can fight. And some of those girls have beaten me. I've also been very fearful walking into the ring because a girl would look really tough, really strong. She looked like she had that city background and she grew up fighting. But those girls, half the time, lacked the skill sets and they lacked the conditioning to hang with me. One of my favorite fights that I had was um, here in Buffalo. I had 10 fights at the time and I was fighting a girl with 70 fights. Multiple time national champion. I didn't even have a, a national championship at this point. And I remember myself distinctly crying in the bathroom before my fight because I was thinking to myself, my family's here, my friends are here, and they're gonna see me get beat up. I ended up walking outside, and I was talking to a group of people, still crying, and the girl passed me and saw me crying. And I thought to myself, this really is not looking good for me. I ended up beating that girl. So I learned that you cannot judge people just off of how you see them. Now, what else can you guys take home from this? Because I know that not everybody is going to be a boxer. And I know, even knowing 81% of women are sexually harassed in their lifetime, and every 98 seconds, somebody is sexually assaulted in America, I can't stand here and assume that every single one of you guys have been affected by this. So, I came up with three fights based on my experiences being sexually harassed, being bullied, fighting, coaching, going through highs and lows, and with my faith. And the first one I wanna talk about is being defined by accomplishments. So when I won my national title, my first national title, I won it by knockout. I thought that everything was solved. I thought the hatchet had been buried with the kids that bullied me and harassed me. I thought I was healed. I wasn't. I had a lot of cool highs from that. I had news stories. I got to star in the Goo Goo Dolls music video for So Alive. But a news story came out titled, Bully to Boxer. And I watched it. And I noticed there was a comment underneath that that said, she deserved to be bullied. She had sex with a teacher. Five years later, kids are still making assumptions about something that they have no idea about. And I'm not gonna lie, it hurt me. It hurt me pretty badly. And throughout my wins and my losses, I realized if I'm gonna be defined by accomplishments, I'm gonna have to keep my winning streak going. When I lose, I'm gonna get really upset. If I place all my hope into boxing, I'm not going to end up feeling great about myself every single day. I'm gonna have good practices and bad practices. I'm gonna have decisions where I thought I won a fight but they gave it to somebody else. So I realized I can't be a slave to accomplishments, whether it be titles, money, any of that. I can't be defined by that. So what can we do? We can be accountable for ourselves. Another fight I want you guys to keep up in life is the fight of denying accountability. Us as people go through a lot, all right? There is not a single person in here that hasn't gone through something, hasn't been upset. Now I wanna ask a question and raise your hand if this pertains to you. Who here has ever made a bad decision in life? I'm gonna raise two hands because I know I've made plenty. If you don't believe me, you can ask my mother, okay? Um, so everybody raise their hand. But what I find to be so funny, not in a ha-ha way, I ironic, is instead of us trying to learn why other people made poor decisions, 
we ridicule them for it. Now, I believe we do this because we want to take the accountability that we should be having and we want to take the spotlight off of ourselves. It's a lot easier to point out other people's imperfections and not focus on your own. But I want to challenge you guys to learn your imperfections and open up to the imperfections of others. I had to stand and look at myself in the mirror and say, you know what? It's not my fault that I was sexually assaulted. It's not my fault that I was young and I was 16 years old. And at the time, I didn't understand what was going on and didn't have the courage as a 16-year-old girl in school to stand up to somebody in a higher power that was sexually assaulting me. Now, if the same thing were to happen today, I wouldn't let that happen. But at the time, I didn't. I didn't make the right decision, and I really... I let it get to me. I let it overcome me. The third thing is fighting self-absorption. I want you guys to set goals. Goals are extremely important. But if I were to have these goals of being a national champion just for my own self-glory, I wouldn't be accomplishing much. Now, these pictures are with some people from my boxing team. I absolutely love these people because these are the people that I fight for. I fight for people that have been bullied. I fight for the women that have been sexually harassed and sexually assaulted and maybe at the time they couldn't impose their will, but now I'm doing it. See, if you're doing stuff just for you, it's gonna be easy to quit. If you're doing things for other people to make a difference, if you're working to better your community, that's something worth accomplishing. I want you guys to keep up these fights. Don't allow accomplishments to define you. Be accountable because everybody has imperfections, each and every one of us, and that's okay. But we should focus on the positive aspects of other people and become comfortable with our imperfections and keep moving forward because all of us will continue to be imperfect and it's okay. Keep up these fights and you will be successful in and out of the ring. Thank you.